emergency. I have OJ in the car. He's got a gun to his head. Tell the police to back off. That, believe it or not, is Malcolm Jamal Warner, who was playing A.C. Cowlings. Last episode was the famous Bronco car chase, which I didn't know, Kelly Jackson, that Al Cowlings also had a white Bronco. Neither so did that I. that white Bronco is different than the white Bronco found outside of OJ's house in yes. Brentwood with a uh, blood stain on it. Yes. Um, the man who plays Christopher Darden is from Lewis. Uh, is, is from we St. don't Lewis. have him yet. Sterling Brown is going to be joining us here in just a moment. What I think is so fascinating about this OJ thing are the young people who don't know the story. We have someone in this room, Dan Dowd. Dan Dowd. He was like, couldn't even speak. He was like three years old when it happened. <laughs> but, but you're watching. I, I can only imagine what it's like for somebody who's watching this for the first time because, mm -hmm. he, okay, so you, you know OJ was charged with a double murder. You know he was found not, not guilty. But the whole surrounding story, the, the car chase, the black-white issue, and the even, Mark Furman, the Cato Kalins. And the relationship, though, that OJ Simpson had with LAPD right. was pretty very friendly right yeah so it's it's uh what happened to chris darden what mm -hmm. you know why is uh, robert shapiro doing legalzoom.com commercials uh, um yeah. right? we have sterling brown so, yeah sterling brown is a st louis native who plays christopher darden in the people versus oj on fx it airs uh its first airing is tuesday nights but it airs throughout the week uh sterling brown welcome to st louis hey man thank you very much good to be home you got it uh where'd you go to high school <laughs> of course, the St. Louis question. I'm you the St. know Louis it. Country Day, now known as MICDS. Okay, great. And, and so we were talking, young people don't really know this story. How much of this story did you know going into this project? I, you know, I knew a bit of it. I knew what was on television, you know, the Bronco Chase, the verdict. I watched the case periodically throughout the year, uh, not too closely because I was a freshman at Stanford University and I was busy trying not to fail out of school. Right. Um, but so I knew quite a bit of it. But as I uh, got onto the project and did the research, reading Jesse Tubin's book, reading Christopher Darden's book, I learned a lot of the stuff that transpired behind the scenes. Um, it is so insanely good. You have played a small role up until now, but Christopher Darden is one of those iconic characters. Um, must have been a little intimidating coming to this part. You know what, man? I, to, first of all, to just be asked to be a part of the whole thing was a dream come true. When I knew that Ryan Murphy was putting this whole thing together and all the people who were attached at the time, Sarah Paulson, Cuba Gooding Jr., John Travolta, etc. Um, I was just worried that I didn't, you know, make myself look bad. So I showed up as prepared as possible. Uh, obviously, the, the largesse of the case, and people remember uh, everybody who was involved in the trial, and, and a lot of them are still living. Mr. Darden is, is definitely still living. So I think the pressure I felt more than anything was I hope that when he saw the show, he saw at least an inkling of himself in the performance. Did, Did you? you <laughs> we're probably going to ask the same thing. Did you look at some of the old um, uh, trial video? Oh, oh, my goodness. We had trial video, like, constantly being said to us for different parts of, uh, for different scenes. I looked at a lot of old interviews of, of Gardens in particular, uh, interviews that he did with Oprah Winfrey and Charlie Rose, um, read those books, and we were, like, if we weren't doing lines like Sarah Paulson and myself had our computers up in front of us, just looking at footage for body language, for where they were looking when something was said, et cetera, et cetera. Like we, we, we went through it pretty hard. Do you have to wear those big, hideous 1980s glasses? Yes. <laughs> oh, you know, those don't look good to you? <laughs> I mean... They look, they look good in 1994. Right. I, don't, I don't know about 2015. <laughs> I definitely wore them in 1994. Thank God for the <laughs> Uh, Sterling Brown, it seems like I've seen the first two. I, I, we, we've devoured the first two episodes, but it seems like your character, Chris Darden, is the one true altruistic character in this whole story. Wow, that's, that's an interesting perspective. I, I definitely think that 
because he was not some sort of rock star within the prosecution's office and he wasn't involved with the case from the beginning, he got a chance to get some sort of insider perspective on how black America was feeling about the trial at the time. So he got a chance to bring that to the prosecutor's uh, side when Marsha ultimately asked him to be a part of the trial. Um, I think that he was looking for justice. I mean, he even said so in this press conference when it all goes down. Uh, he said, we were looking for justice. I'm not sure if we saw justice today or not. I think he saw beyond color, where a lot of black Americans had a tough time doing that, or because they were there was something else of import at the time. And what was of import to him was the brutal taking away of two people's lives. Somebody had to speak up for them, and that's what he was attempting to do by prosecuting O.J. Simpson. There's a great scene at the end of this last episode where you're playing Chris Darden in, in your backyard and your your buddies are watching the chase, you watching the chase, and your father turns to you and says, stay as far away from this case as possible. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it sort of goes to the racial tension that was brewing that that we in the rest of uh, uh, of America didn't know what was coming. Sure. No, I mean, his, and his, in his book, In Contempt, he definitely talks about how his family warned him that this has the potential of being something uh, greater than what he realized. The, the image of a black man prosecuting another black man, the whole idea of being crabs in a barrel, like why would you try to pull somebody down when they've reached the pinnacle of success? Somebody who's worked their way from the bottom, who's Heisman Trophy winner, and rushing leader, and now Hertz rental car spokesman and movie star. Like, why would you try to take this man down? And it wasn't about the image for Christopher Darden of O.J. Simpson. It was about the reality of the evidence that he had been presented that led him to believe that he was guilty of a double homicide. It was, he'll admit to being a bit naive with regards to that and thinking that if he was able to present to black America and to the jury that he had, the evidence that he had been shown himself, that they could only reach the same logical conclusion. It wasn't a matter of logic. There was a great deal of emotionality involved in this case, and, and rightly so, understandably so, with regards to uh, people's experiences with the Los Angeles Police Department, uh, most specifically the Rodney King beating. Sterling, Sterling Brown is right in the middle of it. The People versus O.J. Simpson on FX. It airs Tuesdays. Eight more episodes to go, but you can certainly watch it uh, on FX throughout the week. Sterling Brown, the pride of MICDS, plays Christopher <laughs> Darden. Sterling, thanks for checking in. Good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you so much, McGraw. Appreciate it, Kevin. You, you guys it. have a good day. You too. Take care. 827 here, Big 550 KTRS. Let me tell you about my friend.